who may who may you know may not remember I'm Mike Zubkoff and I'm sort of the uh, I don't know Lake Fairley Camp Director. So uh, and uh, and then secondly I'm uh, I'm a cheerleader of uh, Katie Milligan. So between those two things, that's sort of the, the roles I probably best remembered for. Uh, what we what we're done today is we decided to look for sort of three of the what I would call the uh, shyest members of the of your of your groups, uh, and we want we brought them up here. Uh, and uh, another learning experience. Another learning right. experience. So, uh, and so what we've done is we've asked uh, Austin Pittman, who you all know from United, and Leslie uh, Lindenbaum in the center uh, from North Shore LIJ, and Ken Rosenfield from MGH. Uh, and what I've asked them to do is to take four to five minutes each to reflect really on their experiences of the day. You know, what did we learn today? What thoughts did it spark? What was the most important takeaway? And how might you use some of this back at uh, your daily work? So we're going to do that first. They're each going to take four or five minutes. It's 15 minutes total. Two or three. Two or three, OK. Uh, and then after that, we're going to open that up for general discussion. Kenny's ready for a drink. Uh, for another 10 or 15 minutes or so. This is a tough group. And, uh, and then what we're going to do in the third part is we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about we have a bunch of guests coming uh, to join us for the symposium tonight and tomorrow. We'd like to have a general discussion about you know, what do we want to bring forward from today to tonight and tomorrow? Uh, and what do we want those folks who are coming tomorrow to get out of this symposium? And then what are the success measures for this symposium? You know, what, what, would, we, what would we consider a success? Because we have a lot of people coming tomorrow uh, at, the, at your invitations. So why don't we just start, uh, Austin, could you kick us off? Sure. Um, so since I can't sit, I'm going to stand up. Um, but uh, at any rate, for, the first thing that I wanted to say was um, thank you. That last exchange, you know, the way that we interact, it, it, um, it's fantastic. And I'm always amazed at the way the conversation goes and what thoughts start to generate. If you couldn't have seen or didn't notice because you were headed out to, on break, as soon as the conversation ended, um, spontaneously, each one of the United Healthcare people joined in the center of the room and began to talk about, you know, here's a program or here's an idea, here's something we could do. And so one of the overall reflections I guess I have is just continuously amazed at the talent, passion, energy, and then the, combined with the ability to actually go do something, right? And that's, that's a pretty, that's what makes this, this program and all of you so special and what you're here to do. That's, that's amazing to me. Um, I jotted down just a couple of phrases throughout each one of the presentation that kind of stuck with me. Maybe it'll spur what maybe stuck with you. Um, during that first morning session, um, it occurred to me as I was listening to what you guys were facing, where we were going, um, that again and again, that leadership really does matter, absolutely matters. Um, and in within that, um, I jotted down communication, 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 and then model the behavior that you want. You know, we call it leadership shadow and how important that is. You, several of you talked about that, whether directly or not, those are my words, the way I, that way I heard it, but that was impactful to me. Um, this notion of, of radical common sense and empowering people to take action when they see something that just doesn't make much sense and do something about it is, is something that we struggle with as a large organization that I think I've got to continue to find ways to help somebody when they see something in front of them on a customer service line to say, you know what, that, that really doesn't make any sense. I gotta figure out how to change that. Um, this one, for me, out of Ryan's session, um, not just about um, um, human-centered design, went much broader than that, but this idea of asking the right question. Uh, it's just so applicable to everything that we do. Did you ask the right question? If you don't get that, you're gonna get the wrong outcome, for sure. Um, and, and then this, I, this notion of thinking about every single word in that question, right, when you start to design that problem, that, that was um, really impactful. And, and I've heard him, obviously, speak quite a bit um, and worked with him, but, uh, but you know, I learned, take something away every time. The other thing that I think was, was telling that went beyond the human-centered design talk itself, um, but it was one of those concepts, I wrote down, find the story and everything. So if you're in the, we, we're doing the quarter financial close for, for our business right now. You, you got to find the story in the numbers. Find the story in, the pres in, in whatever project you're presenting, in the process, all those things, because that's what people are, that's what resonates with people. That's what they want to hear. That's how you create a room for listening and then action is finding that story. And I think that's, that's really important. And then, again, just overall, um, the power of this interaction. I heard three or four people whisper to somebody else, 
oh, you know what you just made me think of? You know what that made me think of? And so I hope you're going home with a, with a list of ideas. And then again, this, this notion of energy and passion, um, just amazing. Let's, I was just giving that to you. Let's okay. <laughs> so I'm like, um, just been thinking the whole day that I am just absolutely blown away about being here with everybody again. And for the people who I know well, the growth that has happened since we left the program or we began the program and the ideas that everybody is putting forth. So just coming together to actually hear what people are doing and how they are reinterpreting the environment around us, which is changing so quickly. And somebody earlier said, we need to be nimble. We need to be so fast at what we are changing because by the time we think about it, the moment's passed. So looking at ways through innovation to really change it up and not do it the way we did in the past because it didn't work. And we all know what that means. Um, so my, uh, I have a nickname in the hospital, it's Morticia. Um, because it seems that everything I've been doing lately, I have OB, but then I do a lot of end of life stuff. And as you could have told, a lot of us are really passionate about that. And it really is clear, and we have the right people in the room to have that conversation because it's not local anymore. We need to engage everybody, the providers. We actually need to engage the schools because quite frankly, I think we need to have that conversation when people turn 21. Because not just about what they're thinking, they need to have the conversation with their parents. Because until you have the conversation and we routinize death, which is gonna to happen to all of us, and routinize the fact that you need to have the conversation about what you think your wishes are, we're never gonna change anything. So I really look forward to working with everybody who's shaking their head and look to use innovation because we've not been successful over the years with that. Is that Morticia from the Adams family? Absolutely. Long black dress. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, one question. Are you planning on keeping your shirt on this time? <laughs> no, Zubkoff told me that he's going to take his shirt off. <laughs> and he's going to go diving in the Connecticut River. Um, geez, I can't, I can't add to the passion to my right, you know, wow. Uh, so um, first of all, uh, speaking of passion, um, I don't think I wanna make my comments without again nodding to Bonnie Curran, because I, I think to myself around the room that today that is a person who would have added that much more to the conversation, so I miss her, and, uh, and I think we all do. So I know we had a little memorial last night, but um, it's, uh, it's worth mentioning again today for those of us in 13. And, and, and I, I wish that you guys in 14 and 15 had had a little bit more exposure to her because it would have added to your life as it did to ours. Um, so um, I, I'm struck this morning by Greg, by the way, thank you, Greg, for leading a great session. I, I'm struck by um, how we are all um, in this fishbowl and and eating the food that's coming down, uh, or the Kool-Aid, drinking the Kool-Aid that's coming down, and yet when we've, we all sort of acknowledge, when we've gone back to our l institutions, it's a little bit more challenging um, and to actually take that stuff and, and to get people in our institutions who actually uh, believe in what we believe in so passionately. We're a self-selected group. We're the ones who decided to, tra to take this, to do this experiment. We're, in, we're the S group, you know, we're adding we're, we actually, we reoriented our priorities to take this above and add it on top of our other, uh, our, other, um, um, uh, our other responsibilities to do this program, but a lot of other people don't necessarily see it the same way, and I think it's really, that's probably the biggest challenge that I think we all face and uh, need to grapple with, and maybe communication is the way to get to that point, getting people to understand your point of view and maybe not being so you know as I tend to be grandiose and you know I see the the vision I see the thing as, as it's already created at the end of the line but there's so many steps that have to happen along the way and you got to get buy-in by everybody along the way to, to actually be effective and um, that's one thing I've learned I I wish I were there I'm not there I think we, we all need to learn a little bit how to be more effective along the way uh, to get our um, 
message across and our programs and our visions and our dreams uh, implemented. So that's, I mean, so Greg, thank you for sort of bringing that home um, and um, opening my eyes up to the fact that I need to actually communicate even better. Um, I think um, I probably should stop right there. I mean, the, the innovation session was outstanding. I mean, I, I, again, that's something else. I sit here and I listen to Ryan's thing and I'm thinking, oh God, this stuff is so cool. I wish I could just encapsulate it and bring it to my, in, in my brain and drill it in there so I could implement it when I get back to, to Mass General. And um, so, Ryan, are you looking for a job? Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Um, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. He's got a great job working with great people. And uh, I only hope I can bring some of what he um, mentioned back to Mass General. You know, I think that, and the, if I were to say one thing about his talk is that I, I think he's right. We need to actually go to the patients and figure out what their needs are, make it much more needs-based, everything we do, because that's the story. That's the, that's the compelling story. That forms the reason for it. That's the reason we're here, is we're not here for ourselves. We're not here for our, you know, for our institutions. We're here for our patients. And if we can always, always, always keep that in, in mind, then at the end of the day, we will do the right thing, I hope. Um, and that should be our guidance and our guiding light. So um, I think I'm going to stop it. I mean, that last session, oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> it's like MHCDS all over again. I want to get, I, wait, that, I think the one thing that I learned about that is I need to come back and get re-energized with the Trimbles of the world and the, you know, everybody, um, the Wallaces of the world and everybody uh, um, once, at least once a year, maybe more. So maybe we need to figure that out um, um, going forward. So the other thing is I just want to say it's, it's great to have the integration of the classes here. To me, this is the first time we've really actually uh, integrated uh, and, and, and done things together. And, and the vertical integration, or the hard, I should say longitudinal integration over the years, is actually going to be really fun moving forward. So thanks. Great. Good kickoff. Yeah. What about others? What, what were your takeaways? What did you learn today? What did people learn today? What did you learn today? Well, I was thinking of what um, Ken just said um, about how we were able to interact in some of the conversation. I kept trying to think, is that a 2015? Is that a 2014? You know, I knew the 2014s because I'm one. Or is that a 2013? And it was great because we did have, we were all just a bunch of working professionals all coming together to talk about really difficult and exciting things. So that's what I took away. Others? What did people take? What were the takeaways? I know someone here who I know always has insightful comments and doesn't. <laughs> I, I've learned to always listen to her. Thank you. Um, I think a lot of what I heard is a validation of what I've been thinking. Um, I think sometimes the, the lesson from, the, um, from Ryan was around, uh, you know, work I can't, what was the catchphrase, work your way to action, sort of like, so implement something to then test what your theory is. And I think sometime, having grown up in an academic environment, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of reading, thinking, and I'm slow to take action. And so I think it's a really important message that try things out. It may just be a small test of something. Um, so the prototype concept really resonated with me. Uh, I've, in the past, it was all about doing a pilot and sort of studying it scientifically, but I think prototyping is, is really great. And I, I want to thank Chris for, you know, taking the time to come and talk us through the whole innovation concept deeper. I did have a conversation with Chris a couple of months ago because I'm thinking of some innovation work, and I was clearly muddled about the whole C concept and the S concept, and if you're an internal consulting group, what, it, what does that, what kind of a model is that? If you're not the actual team who's doing the work, but you're the team that's doing the coaching and the supporting, is that a C model? Is it an S model? And I, and I think his exploration today with us of a stretched S model was incredibly, incredibly helpful. And I think your insight that, in fact, that's what happens a lot in healthcare. Um, and I think a lot of us coming out of this program, certainly on the clinician side, we've started as like 1.0 FTEs and we're all figuring out how to get you know more and more pieces of our time bought for whether it's leadership work, whether it's innovative work, 
And I, th I think it would be interesting to track the journey of people who, particularly clinicians and, and others who graduate from this program. You know, I've gone now down to a 0.1 clinical and 0.9 administrative innovative, which is where I wanted to go. And, and I think the program has really enabled me to, to do that. So lot, lots of great learning, lots of great stories. I love the focus on end of life care. I think that is a huge issue. Uh, for us in in healthcare, for for our generation, as we as we age, it's I think it's what we want for ourselves. And so, if we can help hardwire it into the healthcare system, it it would just be a huge huge contribution to society at large. So, others, other people have. This is much more granular than the great concepts that preceded it um, or the thoughts, but. Um, during thinking about Chris's session and then Kenny's comments about the term slack and um, how busy our lives are, um, it made me think that when we are wearing our leader hat um, and we're trying to engage people uh, in a team, it would be useful to me to be more proactive about thinking about what I'm going to take off their plate um, and really having a plan for that before I try to engage them because and similarly, when someone's trying to engage me, because I think I also just add to people's, you know, 2.0 FTEs, and there may you may need to sacrifice a process you said was really important five months ago, or an intervention, so that you can allow them the time to do this new thing, rather than just being additive. Just a thought. Good, good points. Over here, we have one. I would just say, I think what, what's been enlightening for me is, I think about coming back to Hanover as kind of like the M MHCDS program is like the big mothership. And then there's us. And, and, and this is the first time that I've really felt like the mothership is much smaller in relationship to what we do as a group and, and who we are as a group. And, and now including the, two for, the 2014s and 15s. I mean, I think we're starting to see that entity come together that isn't just one class and we're starting to get the sense that there are really other people out there with the passion that we have and so it's not that we don't still love the mothership katie it's just it's not that big in comparison anymore it's a little small beautiful okay. hey who else got something to say go ahead so one of the things i've been thinking about after the presentations today is that you can't think of this as a one and done. You can't think of innovation as one and done. So you have to think about how you may uh, take a leap forward, but then you're going to have to tinker or tweak or keep moving and keep trying. And also that it's really hard to take something from a concept and then uh, institute it in your organization where you have to tackle all the culture change and that kind of stuff too. So I think um, it's good for me to come back and get little refreshers and I, I was fortunate because we were able to bring Chris to Vermont and work with a group of stakeholders in state government which was spurred a lot of great thinking but we still need to then move it to the next level. I was just going to mention the uh, the whole needs-based um, aspects um, in in Vermont, which we're working on. You know, consumer-based uh, input to health organizations. I think that's going to be a whole new um, important aspect of of everything we do. More and more consumer input. Other takeaways from today? It must be a take. Someone over here has something to say. Come on, Brett. <laughs> I guess I'm volunteered. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, I'm David. <laughs> no, thank you. It's, it was a wonderful experience today. And um, I think, uh, again, I just I would echo, I, uh, this community is really sacred to me. And uh, I think, you know, um, coming to this program for the, for the degree is, is an important commitment that we've made. But I think even larger than that is the relationships that we've been building here. And I think that's what's most valuable to me here. And uh, to be able to, to share these ideas um, and the innovation that's really spurred so many different ideas in my head today. Um, and, um, and how I can take that back and translate it. Um, and like I said, it's just, um, 
being able to, you know, going back into and into our own communities and our own organizations, there's so many barriers to getting things done. There's so many wonderful ideas, um, not only here but even within our own our own organizations. The people I work with, uh, it's but it's being able to execute those ideas. And somebody mentioned earlier today, one of the biggest challenges is sustaining that success. Um, you know, we've had these these prototype innovations and these things that we've seen um, flourish in a short term, but being able to come back and say, look, you know, we've institutionalized this. You know, and Cotter's changes, the, the, I think the eight steps, the, four, the, the last one is really making sure that the infrastructure is, 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 is engenders that ability to sustain that success. And, and that's one of the areas that I've, I've personally been focusing on as well is that, that missing piece of quality is structure, structure, process, and outcome, and, and being able to, to really to, to manifest and execute that through there. So I really appreciate the chance. Insightful. What about others? Any other folks? What about? Brett wanted to say something over there, I think. <laughs> oh, Brett. Oh, I, 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 I know Brett well. <laughs> that was a compliment. It was a compliment. I think uh, echoing a lot of things uh, that people have said so far today, it's uh, abundantly clear how large and complex this ecosystem that we operate in is. And kind of getting back to what we had originally talked about uh, during Greg's talk about, you know, what are the big struggles and challenges that we face? I think that the more we look at this ecosystem and, and all the different stakeholders involved, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of a lot of different people, whether it's the patients and the human-centered you know, centered design thinking, uh, possibly the administrators, the, the physicians. We all have our own visions of what value is to us. And whether it's a transition to value-based payment, whether it's implementing end-of-life directives, I think that the more we start thinking about how do we put ourselves in the shoes of somebody else to think about what creates value for them and start aligning all those actors, that's when we start you know, being those change agents that we really want to be in. So that's what I took out of today. Another thing with that, so I'm looking around the tables, you can see the integration of all the different, it's really interprofessional, and it really takes a team to care for our patients and to change healthcare. So that I think um, by all of us here, um, and we've talked about and know about the silos in healthcare, that we're trying to, as a team, we can start breaking down those silos and working together and then transferring that communication that we've learned to improve upon and bring that back to our <coughs> homes, our communities, so that we can bring that forward as well. Uh, I was struck today, um, A, how good it felt to come back and see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, but I was also struck as we went in that first session how we all struggled with the same needs to want to stay connected to have some kind of data come into us, something about that teaching, stick with us, whether it was a live blog, I think that was uh, you know, Brophy's idea. Um, it just, it felt good, and it also struck a nerve that I thought, wow, everybody has the same thing that I'm going through. I feel sometimes too disconnected, I don't have enough time, and I miss everybody, so it's good. Yeah, the relationship side of it. Yeah, what, uh, how about some others? Anyone over at this table had a observation? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, instead of take uh, take away, I'm I'm feeling that um, I'm on to some maybe get involved more on uh, involved more about what you're you are doing after learning so much um, because actually uh, no hard feeling, but I'm very happy that I can be in this 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 discussion and learn so much of this stuff at my age. Um, and Your so, age, imagine how some of us feel. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> that's why I said no hard feeling. I mean, it's good to learn at my age about this and, you know, to work for the next like 30 years for that. Um, <laughs> um, well, the other thing, the other thing that um, uh, I, I may feel I'm just be stupid to be here because you got, you guys so so um, professional and, and experienced. But uh, I'm 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 over that like seven months ago, so it's been okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, really appreciate your um, your uh, advice and um, uh, discussion for this um, twenty months, and I'm looking forward to witness like um, the next 
uh, or, 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 or like for the, for, for, for the next decades of talking every year. So, so I'm not take away, but I'm get myself in here and keep thinking and keep looking at in this group. Thanks. So I need to echo what everybody else has said. I am completely blown away by how rich this conversation has been today and yesterday. I feel so rejuvenated just being around my friends, meeting new friends, connecting, uh, finding out that everybody's really struggling with the same thing I am. It's, you know, when we envisioned this symposium over a year ago, I never envisioned it would be this successful, and this is just day one. So I thank you. I'm really excited. I've learned a lot. Um, and I can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. Mentioning tomorrow, what, uh, is OK to change agendas and move to tomorrow? What, what are, we have people coming here that you all have identified and invited. What do, you, what do we want them to learn? What do we want them to, yeah, what do we want them to learn? And what do we want them to take, it, take away from here? And what, how would we say it was successful? Yeah. That's a great question. I, I've been thinking about it a lot because uh, my boss is coming. <laughs> and You're not supposed to embarrass you. No, a, a little bit, but yeah. And you can ask for a raise also if you want. <laughs> I, I think that what's interesting is um, the, the clearly there's a lot of work that needs to be done in healthcare, and there's a lot of different roads that we can take to get there, financially, policy, innovation. And I think that what's really hard is um, for people like my boss and people who perhaps are of that generation, for them to appreciate that the old way of thinking is, was, was good up to a certain point, that perhaps we have to start thinking about healthcare in 2014 in a different way. And that's the takeaway lesson that I'd want um, to them, for them to learn that it's innovation, perhaps. And, but we have to start thinking out of the box in terms of uh, the solutions that we need for healthcare. Any idea how we do that? Let them know tomorrow? I, mean, I, I was going to have him and Chris have a beer together for about half an hour. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'd like yeah, to add I, to that that um, actually upstream education is actually very important. And in my experience, that's actually been a little bit of an issue. Using Chris as an example, I kind of, we work in a can-do culture. So if, they, if someone asks you to do a C project with no resources, and I'm, it's not like the culture is say, sorry, can't do that, or I need more resources. But the book, just handing in the book Stella, and you know, we have a good enough relationships. But resources that would actually allow people to go back to their education, back to their institutions. Our bosses are too busy to come take the time to do this course. But how do we actually, if you will, upstream educate um, our, our um, bosses? Interesting idea. Yeah. Others? You got people coming tomorrow. Many of them are your friends, some are bosses. What do you, yeah. Um, I, I think a piece from where I come from is that uh, it's important for folks that come from, from um, our areas to, to, to know the focus of the program, um, I think a little bit, and to know what we're doing here. Like, what does that actually mean when we go back to work? Um, and, that, and that we shouldn't be perceived as a threat. That in fact the work that we do is about engaging the people that we work with, and that we don't anticipate going back to our organizations and just being the only change agent that you know in the organization, but rather it is a, a team effort. Um, and so, so what what do we bring back to our organizations? And I think that if people had an overall um, impression of the work of the program uh, and what they can expect us to bring back, that's an important one. It, as they are investors in your growth. I wanted to tag on to that a little bit. Um, the person I invited isn't coming, so I don't care what you do. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but I think it is important um, for those of us who have sponsors or, or you know, have friends coming in. This is not a program that is focused on building individual high achievers. And that was one of the things that brought me here is, you know, how George and Katie described that, that this is about how we work together and make each other succeed. And that is so important. Uh, you know, and I think very unique to this this kind of program that that I'd love for more people from the outside to understand that more. I, I love that. That's like we got to get these guys to feel the love. Then, <laughs> so we we I mean seriously, I mean the people that come tomorrow, I think we should give them, you know, bring them in to the MHCDS um, family, if you will, 
because they are a part of it. They're you know, our, our friends and our associates, but then bosses and but that's that's one way to get them to you know feel that that passion that we have and uh, and the excitement that we all have. See another comment over here. Oh, was go ahead. You know, being here today reinforces that I made the right decision coming into the program. Uh, because from the physician side, you always felt like you're a little weak on the business side, especially my father's an accounting professor, my sister's an accounting professor, so you can imagine what holidays are like. <laughs> but, uh, so I was, I was looking to actually to go into an MBA program. And I was led to this program, thank God, because I think if I would have been in an MBA program, I would have wound up widgetizing everybody. Patients, employees, everybody that I worked with, which I think would have been a big mistake, because really what it comes down to from the conversations that we're having today, that it really is about the people. Patients first, but also the people that you work with on the front line. And that's what this program's about to me, that it has a soul to it, which I think is important. You know, we talked a little bit about relationships and connections, and Leah, nobody I invited is coming either, so you guys can hang together. Um, but there is a physician leader from our organization coming who is very interested in advanced directives. And so I've been sitting here thinking, all right, you know, I need to talk to you, he needs to, I need your system to be you, and how can I make those connections on a topic that I know is relevant so they can have that relationship and then begin that conversation. So I think that's something we can do. Think about those other connections that our guests might have with people in the room um, to, to, to further that, that family feel. And so and everyone definitely hook your so everyone up with Morticia, too. <laughs> yeah. What's that, Jeff? Your, your Morticia, Morticia as well, too. yes. Um, yeah. Just, just one, one point I wanted to add. Um, there are going to be a number of healthcare leaders coming tomorrow that are probably tasked with designing new healthcare delivery systems. And you know, going back to some of the things that Ryan said at the very beginning of his talk, that start with people's needs rather than what we perceive their needs to be. And if we don't know what their needs are, then we need to uh, facilitate some empathy and figure out what are their needs, what are they asking. Maybe they don't even know how to ask the right questions, but just to stand in their shoes for a second and feel what they feel can help begin to answer that question. What are people's needs? Not what we think they are, but what are, what are people's needs? And I, I'd like that message to come out tomorrow. That, that's important, Jeff. That's important. I don't know. Any other? Yep, I have one thought. Just what we want to accomplish is it, is it successful? I, hopefully that they think it was worth the trip. It was worth the investment of time that they were they get one new idea, one new thought, some change that when they leave here, they've got something of value, right? If, they, if I was just gonna bottom line it, you know, whatever, however they perceive that to be, that there's something of value for them. If you, do you folks have assignments to relate to certain people who are coming tomorrow? Or is it just have, have just so, it isn't like you've sort of decided there's two or three people coming in that you, some of you want to make sure you meet with, like you just talked about on uh, advanced directives. Have you all, so you're not organized with people coming tomorrow yet? Okay, just. Is that feedback? <laughs> no, I'm just, just wondering how you, how you, you know, how, no, do, you, how good, do you execute? That's, that's we heard about execution today, and I'm assuming tomorrow's symposium is an execution opportunity for us. That sounds great. I mean, I, that actually is a really, really good thought. You do, are you like a professor somewhere or something? I, mean, I have an office near Chris, so that was why. <laughs> um, I, just, I just want to point out that the rest of the people, actually a lot of them are joining us for dinner tonight, so that's another opportunity to kind of welcome people in to sit and talk, as well as tomorrow. Is there any um, identification of, I mean, there's a lot of us, we have gotten to know each other, but those new people coming in, is there any way that we can readily identify them so we can reach out to them? Different color? Yeah, that's what we usually do is something different. different. We, different usually color, color, you know. we usually color code. Hats, everybody. something different? Hats? Hats are good. That on the list for next year, yeah. That's Hats to have something different. What else? <laughs> well, you're not going to let that drop the right. I mean, so we ought to think about if people do have some specific interest in people connecting, let's make sure we take action on that 
you know. Well, maybe. Today, maybe there I mean, should I know be it a, won't be as organized as we think, but that, that's a good thought for next year, and we should make sure to do that. Well, I, I, well, maybe there is an opportunity, Katie. I'm just thinking, you know, as uh, we haven't looked at the agenda directly, but Barb, we, well, maybe we should look through and see, is there an opportunity to ask them, what are your interests? Um, sometime during the day tomorrow, maybe we can set aside some time to say, to, you know, either small, small table conversations or some way, or maybe, maybe when they check in, people could say if they have a specific interest. Um, it might not be bad idea to put it on a, on a three by five card and see if we can address some of those during the day. You might be able to cluster people at, I don't know, tomorrow's schedule, but the lunch tables, maybe there's some way to have some of the tables that have an interest. And I don't know, there's, there's different ways to execute on this one. You guys know how to put a girl on the spot. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll think about it and see what we can come up with. And if we can't think of the right way to do it this year, we will absolutely do it next year. You do all have um, MHCDS class years on your name tags. So those of our guests who do not say MHCDS with a class year would be our visitors. If it has an like, asterisk by it, is that a bad thing? <laughs> 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 And you need young eyes to be able to the see faculty, it, so. The faculty hasn't voted on yours yet. <laughs> I thought the diploma got lost in the mail. <laughs> Katie is, what, yeah. Are there other, other business or, I mean, I know we have to get back here at, is a reception at 5.30 and we're supposed to get out of this room so they can set, get it for dinner. Is there any other business we need to do? Uh, Although, Greg, you, 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 we had something. We, you and I were talking earlier about this group, and we came up with a name, as I recall. What, what did you decide to refer to these people as? You, uh, I, I might have to censor this a little bit, but the, um, I, when Mike and I were talking, we were talking about everybody that came to this program is a risk taker, and everybody that came to this program is impatient. Right? So we just started thinking about everybody as inpatient risk takers, which in real life is usually dangerous. But I think for, for this group, it's pretty energizing. So, so that's what we're, uh, I mean, we may end up with funny hats or something about that, that relate to that. But you know, this whole um, discussion about end of life care is what kind of comes full circle to what we were talking about this morning. This is one of those issues that people in different institutions want to work on. And you heard a lot of, you know, there's a lot of experience and expertise around that just, you know, that came out during the, uh, the last session. So that's one of those things that when we have our electronic, whatever it is, um, would probably rise to the top. And I bet there'd be a lot of people working on that. In closing, I'd like to thank our panelists for, for kicking it off and uh, getting hey, us going into discussions. Hey, hey, can, I, can I add one thing, though, real quick on that? Because I, I don't want to let that, that go. That's a very real and I think doable. We, we, could, we could make, a, we have enough critical mass um, and, and connection. We could make a, a real difference from a number of different angles if we chose. And I, I don't want to do it spur of the moment kind of thing. I really think we should put some thought into is that an issue that we could help own, could, that we could help, um, and I know plenty of organizations are working on it, but we all get this sense that it's not, you know, it just seems like that that, that could be very impactful. I, so I guess put it as a challenge for us to think about in a question that we should answer. It, maybe the answer is no, we can't, but we're all gonna keep, you know, help each other, but I mean in a more, a more real kind of way than just keeping up with what we're doing at our own institutions. It, what do you mean? No, we can't. No, no, I'm just saying. We should <laughs> answer what, yes or no. Can we? I mean, really, I think that's why we're all here because we believe we can. So, um, if that's something we want to do, that's something we should focus on. And I think we can yeah. do that. Five topics. I think there's probably five hot topics that we all hot spots. But you know, we're, we're kind of at that. We're kind of at that. If you think about a success plan, right? So um, uh, in, you're in a new job, you're in a new business. What do you typically look at? So what's a quick win? What's something? I'm not suggesting it's easy, but if we could really show something that's just indicative, a directional indication of what the power of this program could actually do in meaningfully transforming healthcare delivery in, in the United States, that, that we could own, that, that would be very, very powerful and a great indication of where where this where this program is going to go i just that 
I just put it out there, maybe we should give some thought to who might want to spend some time working on that, framing it up and deciding, because I think it's a big commitment to decide that we want to actually take something like that on as an individual movement. I agree. I thought I was giving Greg the last word, but it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob Hansen always gets the last word. You haven't commented all day, Bob. I, have, I haven't been here all day. <laughs> um, I thought the end of life discussion was, was really great. And um, I think if we wanted to take something like that on, that, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd like to see us bring, I guess I, I missed a discussion about bringing back some live sessions and um, continuing the teaching and, and education beyond this and beyond the classes. So I'd, I'd really, if that, if, that, if that came up, we did a couple of those, I'd like, I'd like to continue those, and that might be a vehicle for pushing forward on, on, on some topic. But I, I think the difficulties, Austin, when you said you know, United Health can't be basically paying people to fill out advanced directives, and that, that kind of issue just seems to be so important for us to address. So. That'd be, that'd be great. Otherwise, I think we should go have a drink or something. <laughs> I, just, I, I just have um, one, one last word beyond Bob's last word, and that is that <laughs> um, this is the end of the, of the MHCDS community pre-conference. I think it's been really great. It's been really um, gratifying for me to be, to be um, in the room and, and hear the conversations happen. And I wanted to share my takeaways. My, I, I'm taking away a lot of things, but two very specific takeaways. Um, one is that, that there is a very strong desire from everybody for more connection, communication, and collaboration. And so um, we'll, do, we'll, we'll um, work on that and see if we can facilitate that with your help. Um, and then I did, you know, like, like other people, I picked up on the end of life discussion and the, and the passion around that and actually I already asked. Uh, Jeff and Leslie, if they would um, put together a session for next year's symposium. So we have our first symposium topic for next year. They said yes. Um, and then finally, what all that leads me to is um, my desire to have you all communicate with us because, because we don't know, we don't um, know what your needs are in the, you know, the, the needs-based innovation. We can't innovate on your needs if we don't know what your needs are. So please continue to let us know what your needs are. We want to, we want to hear what they are. So um, there's a break now and then the reception begins at 5.30 out here and dinner at uh, a little before 7, 7-ish back in the ballroom. So thank you. <laughs>